We all know that so many councils are uh, literally on the cusp of going bankrupt. And I, I have to say, I have to give credit where it's due, it's not just a particular party. This is right across the board. Uh, it is not party uh, specific. And obviously there are many different reasons as to why that is happening, but... It does not escape my notice, and perhaps yours too, that so many uh, times now, so many councils, they are absolutely raking it in in terms of how many fines and the breadth of fines that they are now issue issuing to you and I, the everyday people. So, for example, 60,000 uh, motorists are being hit by £12.50 ULES charges every single day. We've got councils wanting to hike parking fines by up to 25%. Uh, and I could go on. There's so many different ways now councils are really raking in the cash. And I feel a little bit like some kind of stealth ATM that's been expected to fund the mismanagement of incompetence. And I don't like it. Well, there's a couple of different things going on here, Michelle. I think you're absolutely right that there's been this whole approach of uh, taxing, surveillance, restricting. They talk about 15-minute cities in places like Oxford and Bath, uh, but actually what it means is bollards and cameras. We don't have service provision. We can't even get to see a GP where they're there, let alone being in a new one in 15 minutes. If all this new public transport is going to be provided in areas where it's not there, and if these amazing infrastructure was there, that's one thing, but that isn't provided. What we've got surveillance, taxes, more fines. In Haringey, over four months, two million in revenues. You've mentioned ULES up and down the country. We've seen in the Midlands 50,000 people challenged the clean air zone and had their uh, challenges uh, upheld. But we've got a bigger problem, and that is that Britain has been sluggish for a long time. That's why Together Association, we've got a cabinet that we've launched to uh, drive certain areas where we have the economy, housing, innovation. We need to have a situation where we have a future orientated Britain Britain, where we have coastal development, where we have investment, where we have infrastructure, build houses, create new jobs, retrain, let the zombie companies fail. None of this is being presented by the government or by the opposition. That's why we need to have a new manifesto, really, where the public is at the heart of things. Cor, do you trust the public to be making the key decisions, driving the future of this uh, country? Is that what we need, more public involvement? I think I always trust the public because we're the public and we're paying for it, and that's especially true of local authorities. Um, I dis disagree with an awful lot of what Alan said, but I want to come back to the stories that you highlighted because they are grimly fascinating, really. You know, I, we've got several local authorities. I think the biggest one is in Birmingham in trouble. Um, they're equal pay claims. It's one to two billion pounds in Birmingham. But I was very interested in the media coverage. So this is a credit agency, Moody's, um, flagging a concern about council resources. And it's not very good for David Cameron and his premiership when you look back at it. Years of austerity, so local government uh, funding cuts of 40 to 60 percent. And then David Cameron's government scrapping the Audit Commission, which was a statutory body that looked at local government finances. So it's a non-vindication of David Cameron. I've got a lot of sympathy for local authorities, whatever their political stripe, because I think they're having to make deeply difficult decisions about how you keep public services going. And yes, that's why they are trying to eke out, you know, revenue from uh, buying parking permits and uh, so on and so on. Do you think there's uh, a few too many incompetent people in local government? Well, I'm always wary of generalisations, but I think every single part of the British state could perform better than it does. And that takes nothing away from their hard work. And do you think if someone is incompetent and leads, for example, their council onto the edge uh, of bankruptcy, whether it's uh, doing things like not paying people according to the law or whether it's thinking that you're some kind of UK Donald Trump real estate speculator and making it uh, disastrously wrong, do you think then you should lose your jobs? Do you think you should face, uh, in some cases, I would argue, perhaps criminal prosecutions? Because to me, that doesn't often happen. These people seem to sail off into the sunset with these beautiful pensions, only to pop back up in a different role in the not-too-distant future. Well, there's a lot there. So I think uh, politicians, mayors and council leaders obviously face election every four years, so they can lose their jobs and their status and so on and so on. People right at the top of councils, remember, we're talking about probably... 0.01% of local authority employees, because a lot of people are on very modest salaries, but people who run local authorities tend to be quite well paid. But I think they have, need to have a special skill set to deliver that job, because they're responsible for so much, in a sense. What's a special skill set? Well, I think they need to be very good at things like finance and audit, and then I think they need a... Well, they're failing. 
If, you, if your special skill set to run a local authority is finance and audit, something is going catastrophically wrong. Well, the catastrophically wrong thing, one of them, is a 40 to 60 per cent funding cut from central government. So you, but I do find this interesting. I think that some people just want to remove around bits of money we've got already. Since the 70s, we've had sluggish growth. We need to have people paid more money. We need to have more productivity. That means making investments. The levelling up discussion, for instance, the relationship between local authorities, the 406 or so in the rest of the country, the only way we're going to get dynamism and wealth creation is to have proper investment, R&D, not in an election cycle of four years, but planning for the next 50 or 100. And the problem is people have stepped away from that. They're risk averse. There's a lack of ambition. They want to outsource to consultants. Leadership is missing. And then they want to play a blame game. And in the middle of it, the citizens, local constituents, are, are the ones who suffer. And the resolution is not to do what American cities have done, which is what's happening here more and more, which is tax and fine and restrict and have a war on motorists and a war on freedom and mobility. Active travel and livable streets, which thankfully now the Department of Transport has stopped funding Mark Harper because of our interventions, that is directly to blame for these things. And I think the more the public says these things and gets involved, the better. Well, you are the public, uh, Herm. Do you think that you want... Well, do you want more uh, involved? What would that look like? Do you want a series of yeah. referendums? Well, I think, well, referendums are always a good thing, but I think that what we need to have is what the public needs and a discussion and a debate openly. We've not had that. We've not had that about many things. Even when we do have... Well, what does that look like? What, well, what that looks like is in every area, in innovation, in housing, in the economy, is what are the needs of the public, first and foremost? In the yeah, NHS... That's all well, is it so, how do you ascertain all well, this Well, in each area, you have to present that and you have to discuss it. So, if you, if you think the role of the NHS is to have an ideological, really, really uh, big bureaucracy and you don't have efficiency in delivery, then carry on with the model we've got. If we think it should be about expediting service to people quickly, and you can do that in a range of ways like they do in Germany or other countries, for instance, then that's what should be put on the map. Similarly, in education, could you have a more of a mixed use? Should it be so ideological or not? Let's have the interests of what people need at the heart of things. Think of that first, because too much of the decision making has been based on 30 years of technocrats not being under pressure from the public and just saying this is what you need. This is the next ideological. We're not really going to do It's tinkering. And we need fundamental change, particularly in innovation and investment R&D. Do we? I think we all want better R&D. The question is how you get there. Because, um, to my mind, too much of what Alan said was either a generalisation or wrong. To take one example, referenda. Referenda are not that popular. There is not a public demand to have more referenda, even on a local level. To give another idea, the suggestion that um, we take things out of the political cycle. Now, there's something to be said for that. And um, cast your mind back seven or eight years, when Ed Balls was Shadow Chancellor, he had the idea of a National Infrastructure Commission. Labour lost the election, but that idea was picked up by George Osborne for exactly the reason you described, Michelle, that big decisions, HS2 is one of them, and we're all a bit sick of talking about HS2, but you take decisions like that out of the political cycle, and there is some kind of body of qualified people that look at what the country needs in 30 or 50 years' time. Yeah, but the problem is people will be sitting at home going, it's fascinating to talk about 30 or 50 years' time. But then what happens is that businesses prepare themselves to, I don't know, so you've seen this petrol and diesel ban that was supposed to be, what was it, 2035? And then so everyone's gearing up for that. And then, no, so it's supposed to be 30. So then it gets pushed back. So the problem is people will argue and say, yes, it's great planning, but then those plans don't really get stuck to. They get changed and chopped and then businesses don't know if they're alpha or alpha, if they're coming or they're going. Well, I understand that. That's the problem of not having clarity. But it's like the leader of the Liberal Democrats saying, well, if we were really going to have nuclear power, we wouldn't have energy independence until 2022. And the point is, if we don't commit uh, to infrastructure development, to investment and R&D as a principle, we're not going to get there. And that doesn't mean not dealing with the problems we've got immediately, but it means putting them front and centre. That's the thing that we need to address properly, and the public's got to be at the heart of it. Well, there you go. The public got to be at the heart of it. Do you want to be at the heart of it? And it, what would that look like to you? There